Here it is. NWA straight out of Compton. It's got the cuts on it. <laughs> fuck the police. But it doesn't say fuck, it just has four dashes on it. I ain't the one. Express yourself. Pretty dope, man. Awesome, very iconic image of the group looking down. Easy with uh, with the gun, all that stuff. Now, who is the who is the group? As we primarily know them as as Dr. Dre, um, Ice Cube, MC Ren. Ice Cube and Ren wrote all of the lyrics on this record. Ren and DOC wrote all of the lyrics on um, the second NWA record, Ethel's for Zaggin. Um, but yeah, um, so uh, Easy E, Yella, who helped with the beats with Dre. Um, and you had early on Arabian Prince was, was a member uh, who kind of, you know, got the Bozak, although I believe he's on the cover right here. Um, <clears throat> anyways, they're managed by Jerry Heller, okay, um, an old white dude, <laughs> um, you know. Um, and, uh, yeah, so that's kind of the group. Um, this is, you know, the early on Dr. Dre stuff, not as polished, straight up like 808 stuff, loops and all that. By the time he got around to hitting in the studio with this, um, he's just, he's matured, you know. And, and Dre is like, he's not no Paul C. He's not no Pete Rock. He's no Jill, Jay Dilla. He's not technical at all. He don't flip samples at all. Um, he just knew how to make shit sound fucking fat. He just knew how to make, make stuff crack. He had a really good spidey sense for what sounded good and what people would want. He knew how to make a record, you know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, that's real important. Um, but, yeah, this record, all of the lyrics, like I said, Easy e not a rapper. Dr. Dre, not a rapper. They never wrote any rhymes for themselves. They had ghostwriters. On this record, the ghostwriters were, were mostly Ice Cube. This is, like, mostly Ice Cube's. Uh, lyrics and then Ren wrote his own lyrics and I believe some of the other lyrics for the group members um, But yeah, um, you know, that's the thing about Dr. Dre like the chronic he didn't write nothing on that um, And e even worse now, you know, Dr. Dre is not, you know, beats that say, you know, Dr. Dre beat He he he, he kind of put the Dr. Dre touch on it. He has a whole um, Like group of producers making Dre beats that he then enhances he tweaks in the studio um but yeah man they made this record in six weeks it cost them eight grand um which is insane uh it went three times platinum which means three million copies sold i think i said earlier ten times platinum which was a false but it's three times platinum but i believe they've sold 10 million records in the u.s like singles this so 12 inch singles, full length, you know, everything. Kitty's going crazy, um, you know, whatever. But it is insane. They did a ton in sales, mil you know, a million sales and had no tour and no promotion. Just think about that. You know, back in the day, you, you, you'd have to do a tour and have a bunch of marketing behind you to sell records. They did a million sales with nothing like no 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 nothing it's just the record was cracking it was just hitting hitting like that and people were more into it it just had that that's that sound and it was so different um but but really dope and really it influenced everybody west coast artists particularly southwest artists from like texas so like uh you know uh uh the ghetto boys um you know those artists uh, artists in the south and it influenced new new york artists you know um that started to go more down this this path because here's the deal you know whatever selling 
people are going to start to make stuff that sounds that sounds like it. I mean, that, that's a formula that exists now. It's a formula that exists then. So all, all these, you know, rappers, New York rappers that had a certain vibe, they started to to shift that vibe, you know, to talk about what was going on in in, um, you know, parts of New York City. So. Um, but it, yeah, it really changed like rap music, lyrical content started to shift towards these themes. Now, you have to understand, um, why did this record do so well? What well, was controversial? Um, there were controversial artists, number one. Um, the album itself was controversial. Um, and it was all of the media hype. It was all of the, the negative attention that they got um, in the mainstream news that led to its success and it brought it sales to the suburbs to the white kids um you know because it was telling these stories that you know how would chad who lives in the suburbs know anything about any of the stuff that that these cats were talking about and no no clue and you know, what happened is it set off this moral panic, meaning like initially like hip hop or punk music or anything, you know, sets off a moral panic, which means people are paranoid. Oh, my gosh, there's, you know, what's going on in our streets? What's going on in black America? You know, what's happening? They're killing each other and this and that, you know, because of the music, because it got all this attention and, and coupled with negative media attention. But that shit sold it and it's what also what happens with moral panics is initially um you know what people are afraid of it gets brought into the system it gets polished it gets cleaned up and then you got you know soccer moms you know driving in their minivans bumping boys in the hood you know or whatever der some derivative of that you know 30 years later some uh, you know uh uh, uh uh future music or whatever some trap music you know what i'm saying um, which is just kind of kind of funny, um, but yeah, that there was that 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 negative attention, man. That making it something that was illicit, making it something that was wrong, that was um, something you shouldn't have. Made motherfuckers want to have it, you know, and, and that and that was that was the deal, you know. Uh, so let's check out the music video for Straight Outta Compton. Um, this is just, you know, the record, the self-titled record off of this. Um, I mean, it gives you, it gives you everything here. Um, all the stories and the visual element of where they're coming from. You know, and the whole, the whole, the whole thing here, really. It's just like, whew, there was nothing like this. Visually, sonically, nothing uh, at the time. And so it just really... Um, it was really eye-opening for consumers, it was really eye-opening uh, for the industry. It just opened people's eyes in like a different way. So let's watch this music video, we'll watch it the whole way through, and then I'll talk a little bit about um, the Amen, you know, um, drum break. But I mean, yeah, just check out the lyrics on this, listen, just, you know, maybe close your eyes a little bit, but watch also the music video, you know, so you can really take in the aesthetic that, that that they're trying that they're trying to sell here and kind of what defined the group uh, moving forward.